Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here with a quick video in regards to telling you what is leaving on Xbox Game Pass by the 31st of December and if you can get as many of them complete as you possibly can. Well, can you? Punk? Diddy? Itty bitty titty committee? Yeah, well, let's find out. Uh, by the way, the order of quickest completions here will go from shortest to longest. The first up is a lovely five minute one. Now originally, this puzzle platformer type, The Pedestrian, would normally take around three to four hours to complete, but thanks to a newly found debug menu, you can cut that rather drastically to just five to 10 minutes. That is a Christmas present right there. If you don't have it yet, now is definitely the time to grab it. And yours truly has a guide if needed for both the five minute debug one and the full completion if needed. So just check the description box below. Now, Gorogoa, 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 however the hell you pronounce it, but this is a relaxing and weirdly enjoyable game. It looks fantastic, and it is simply a revolution on the puzzle genre. This game, rather than it being a normal puzzler, you basically use moves to move forward. Every time you make an action, the game goes on. You'll just have to play it and see. But the majority of achievements are story related for just completing chapters, etc. There are two miscellaneous ones which include completing a fallen rock puzzle on the first try and setting a clock tower to a right wrong time. Again, just play it and you'll... yeah. Now two playthroughs will be needed, primarily because playthrough two we need to beat the game in under 500 moves and under 30 minutes. Now it can be done quite easily in two playthroughs, but for whatever reason uh, you failed the one of the... Uh, one or the other, you may have to replay it for a third game. Uh, you shouldn't do, but either way, it is a very quick game. One to two hours is all you need. Plus, this should be on your list to smash out. And of course, I has another guide. Right. <laughs> so, this depends entirely on what sort of games that you like. But this is a stealth game. And all ten achievements are for playing online, doing various things. Now, the game is very popular, but it's for me, it's, it's not a me type game. Uh, but if you enjoy this sort of stuff, it is definitely worth getting into. But just note, to get achievements like winning as the neighbour, not getting caught by the neighbour once, being the first kid to the basement door, and literally other various random ones. Oh, and one more teensy tiny thing, they only unlock in quick play and not any custom matches, so you need to get your multiplayer head on and fight! Then not fight, then hide, then not hide, and well, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. But, by the way, you are looking at around six to eight hours to complete this one. And the completion estimate time has just shot up considerably for Ember. Now, or Ember. Now, if you love silly looking yet fun being action games, uh, then Ember is the game for you. You are a firefighter who has to, believe it or not, fight fires. But there are 25 unique levels and the majority of the achievements are quite easy, mostly to do with money, sort of spending it, etc, etc. A few miscellaneous ones, again, which are very easy to get. But the few that will take your time with it are basically getting five stars, called flames, hilariously, in each level, completing seven daily missions, so you, again, you'll have to be on your dailiness daily, and the mainer, bigger ones are for collecting every tool and upgrade, which will cost you some mega, mega bucks, literally a lot of money in diamonds, so expect to grind there even after you finish the game once, and also buying every vehicle, cosmetic, and upgrade. Again, you're only looking at around 20 to 25 hours or so for this completion, but if you don't mind a slight bit of grinding, then this may be extremely good fun for ye. I'll show ye. Now, what a truly, truly top game this actually turned out to be. Another Annapurna classic. This action-adventure open-world game took gamers by storm and for good reason. This space open-world explorer is as brilliant as the game basically changes around with it, i.e. you'll have to explore underground cities before they get swallowed uh, by sand or exploring surfaces as it crumbles away underneath your big chunky astronaut legs. Um, achievements are very random and because of the ever-varying world, your best bet is to check true achievements for all the various 31 base game achievements. Uh, sadly, however, there are 17 DLC achievements, but sadly, again, like I said, you'll have to pay for that one. So getting the full 1,870 gamer score would cost you around 25 to 30 hours and quite a large £12.49. Great game, but yikes on the DLC. And the completion hours are pumped up once again with Tropico 6. 
Now, the tropical games have always been fantastic fun, and number six is another case in point. It is, as I said, a 50 to 60 hour simulation management game, and the achievements are quite varied. You've got to complete 15 missions, which will get you 15 achievements related to those. Uh, luckily, and unlike Tropico 5, there's only one multiplayer one, and that's for winning a multiplayer game as a team. Noisy sloicy. Then there are the remaining random ones, which uh, basically for ending raids, finishing protests, winning sandbox matches, sandbox matches, among various others. Luckily, again, they can be completed in sandbox mode with unlimited money, so you do get a lot of help with the remaining achievements there. If you want to smash it out, I'd say now is pretty much the time to start it. Now, this next one here, Scarlet Nexus, is another massive game, but it is so good and so much fun. This is an action RPG role-playing game, but story-wise, action-wise, and graphic-wise and more, it really does hit the spot. As I said, it is a big 60 to 80 hour completion though. Now basically this will require two playthroughs, so once you've done one, you need to create a clear save, so make sure not to delete it by accident. You can then start a new game plus with the second character of the game and have all your upgrades etc from playthrough one, like I said, for your new character. So you have to play as two characters for all of the achievements. Yes, I said yes, you do need two playthroughs, two different characters, that's always so much fun. But basically, doing this enables you the ability to switch characters at the hideout to get all the remaining achievements, including maxing out character bonds, brain maps, giving all gifts, etc. If there is one to play before it leaves Game Pass, I highly recommend this being the one. Now, on to the next chunky boy of <laughs> the leaving Game Pass games, Immortal Realms Vampire Wars. Uh, this is actually a fun strategy turn-based game, again, if you are into that genre. There are 52 achievements, including completing quite a good few different campaigns, killing many units, taking over all regions, and just so, so much more that I actually can't even fit it all in here. Just know, if you are going to start it, again, you're going to have to fight with which one you're ever going to start, whether it be this or Scarlet Nexus, but if you're going to do it, of course, like I said, start it right now. It is lucky you've got time off over Christmas though, eh? Hey, hey. Now then, I have actually left this one till last, only to say that if you are, but if you are a completionist, do not bother as there is one unobtainable achievement. Frustrating! This is a mech strategy real-time game, but its achievements consist of winning all various missions of different locations, winning a challenge map, and quite a bit of grinding for 1,000 mechs killed, 1,000 resources resourced, and a lot more. Now, if this is your type of game and you don't really care about the completionist, then I do advise giving it a go at the very least. It does look very fun. Uh, this is PC only, by the way, is Old Iron Harvest. But for me, it is the unobtainable, which personally puts me straight off. I don't know how devs can release something broken and then never fix it. Bruh! Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you've gathered, gathered enough information to decide what to play and complete before these leave. Now watch out for my next Game Pass game video, where we will be seeing what is coming into the service next. <laughs> Giggity. Thank you so, so much for watching again. Thank you for all the support, especially on Patreon. You guys and gals are absolute legends. I shall see you in the next one. Big love.